I've been thinking lately about how the current situation might affect the way that we manage projects. I thought it might be helpful to revisit with fresh eyes a book that I reviewed a while back called Project Resilience. This is it here. Um, I'll post a link to the book itself and to my review of it in the comments. And I know that this is coming up the wrong way around for you. It's just because of the video recording app I'm using. This book suggests that resilience is more likely to be achieved if everyone understands the big picture and the reasons behind what they are doing. Placing emphasis on the achievement of goals rather than how they are achieved increases the chances of success over adversity. Here are my key takeaways under each of the book's main headings. Number one, noticing. Uncertainties cannot be forecast, only noticed. Once it has been noticed, project managers must be able to report on adversity quickly and honestly without the fear of blame or recrimination. Otherwise, what you get is watermelon or green side up reporting, which I've written about elsewhere. Number two, interpreting. Stakeholders shouldn't be sold the illusion of project certainty, but instead they should be reminded of project risks, which they will want to believe have been managed out, and of the team's capability to deal with uncertainty. Number three, preparing. Events should only be predicted with any sort of confidence as far as the planning horizon, which can be quite near in the future if there's high uncertainty. Stakeholders must understand that short planning horizons, approximate forecasts and so on, are conscious responses to uncertainty and not merely poor planning or forecasting. Number four, containing. Sometimes in order to respond quickly with creative solutions, you have to forego planning and consideration and just improvise to solve a problem. This is less about what should be done and more about what can be done but it requires that team members are kept up to date with the big picture of what's going on elsewhere. And finally, number five, recovering. Focused first on stopping things from going any more wrong. Then you can make the wrong things right. Beware of short-term thinking aimed at just solving the immediate problem. Think about the impact on the rest of the project and think about repairing damaged stakeholder confidence. To summarize, resilience is mostly about people. We need to be uncomfortable enough about uncertainty to avoid complacency, but comfortable enough to respond to adversity using approaches beyond those that we have used before. I think that in a new world after COVID-19, we might see less focus on making projects and businesses efficient and more focus on making them resilient. If you're interested in achieving that, this book could help. What do you think? Let me know in the comments.